Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's the smile on my face right now. That's what I look like. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me. Now, you might be wondering what is this monstrosity that I'm wearing. It, it's not that it's terrible, right? It's just, it's not me. You, if you've watched my videos, you know I would, I would die with a neckline like this. But I'm excited because it's sweater weather finally. We had the warmest fall on record, which is a little frightening, but, but that's why we try to live sustainably, right? And upcycle our clothes. So now it's finally sweater weather. And so I went thrifting and I bought a bunch of sweaters that I'm gonna try to upcycle. There's nothing really wrong with any of them, but they're just maybe like boring or, you know, funny necklines and things that I just wouldn't feel super excited to wear. For this one, I'm gonna be doing something kind of fun and creative, changing up the neckline completely. I'm gonna be altering the length of this, altering the neckline, and adding a fringe detail that I've been seeing around a lot this fall. It's really eye-catching, it's fresh, it's fun, and so I think this is a good chance to add that. So this is the one I'm most excited about because I really wanna get my hands onto that fringe detail. Let me show you what else I have. This one is a gorgeous red cashmere sweater. And who doesn't love red cashmere except this neckline? Ooh, I just can't tolerate a high neckline like that. I actually had to check for the label to see if I didn't have it on backwards. So I'm gonna drop that neck somehow, not sure how yet. It also has very deep armholes, but it just doesn't feel current in the fit. It also has a little hole in the sleeve there which is super easy to fix. Like if that's all you watch today is how to fix that hole, you'll get something out of it. And then next, this one I was drawn to just because I love anything that kind of looks tie-dyed and it's really soft, like cozy and comfy. I really like this one, but it's like, I don't know, it's just not interesting in the cut and in the styling. It's just sort of boring. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. The neckline's fine. It's just sort of boring. So I'm just gonna see what I can do to kind of add some interest to this one. I don't know. So this is the one I'm going to start with. Definitely the first thing that's got to go is this neckline. I've got my erasable friction pen. I just want to take it down. Like I'm going to be losing all of this, but using that to create a nice crew neck finish here. I'll just go down one more inch. That'll just give me the breathing space that I need. I'm also gonna take it shorter. I feel like the sleeves are short and I have short arms. I thrifted this sweater a couple years ago and every time I throw it on, I just feel comfortable and I feel kind of like me in it. It feels great. However, look at the sleeve here. I'm gonna be cutting these sleeves off a little bit below that sleeve. I'm gonna cut the sweater off just, just there, but I'll save this bit of ribbing to finish off the bottom of my sleeve. So I'll be cutting here too, just a little bit of seam allowance above that ribbing. I did not even draw a line because I'm following the stitches, like the rows of stitches in the knit. That'll be fine. And then the same on this side. And again, I don't really need to draw a line because the knit is making lines for me. To take off this turtleneck part, on a big chunky knit like this, it's easy to find the chain stitch in there. I had to fiddle around a bit, but now I think I've got the chain stitch started. Yes, so there we go. And that will, yes, now the neckline will pull off fairly easily, I think. Ooh, so a little fiddling around to get that started. But once you find that big chain stitch, then it comes off fairly easily. I'll work on that. But then also on the part that I've cut off, I want to just try to unravel so that I can use this yarn for the fringe trim. Okay, now I'm on a roll. Oh, this is fun. You'll like this part. Yeah, you should definitely do this just for the fun of it. Better start rolling this ball up. I just tried it on and I really like the new length and it fits well right up under the arm but here it's just too big so I'll kind of sew on this line and then I'll trim and then zigzag and I'm going to blend into the original seam under the arm here so I'm using a regular needle but a very long stitch just a basting stitch really both sides my thread matches perfectly so I can't see it at all, but I'm just cutting finger width away from my red line. 
I'm switching to a wide zigzag that's four and a half millimeters wide and four long. Okay, so the body is pretty good now. I might as well take care of the sleeves now. Too. So I'll be sewing this little bit of the ribbing that was from the bottom. I'll just make this ribbing the same size as the sleeve. I just need to cut a little bit of seam allowance past the width of the sleeve. And cut two pieces like that. And then I'll join these up and attach them to the bottom of the sleeves. Okay, so I just pressed the seam allowance going up to the sleeve, but it's still pretty raggedy and I don't want it to be able to come back down. So I'm going to just go around using that zigzag stitch again, just holding that up. I might as well do here as well. So I'm going to do it from the outside and I'll just come up and then go around and then stitching through all the layers above that cuff. Oh, that's nice. So that extra little zigzag stitch just helps blend the two pieces together so nice. That looks good, right? But you know what the key is here? I just happen to have the perfect matching thread. So even I can't see it at all. So the sleeves are looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna trim the neckline down and zigzag here as well. And I have to come in here at a right angle and then blend in. I'll just zigzag around that edge now. I'm gonna be using the edge of this collar to make this into a crew neck. And so I want to sew it to the inside first and then wrap this over. I want about an inch and three quarters. First thing I'll do is just connect the two ends of my neckband. I'm just going to zigzag over to try to butt those two ends together. So I'm using the triple zigzag, seven millimeters wide and three and a half millimeters long. And I might just turn and come back the other way just to make sure that is secure. Okay, that's quite a nice little join. That's good. So I'll just quarter mark this band now. The join is going to be the center back. And so this little rib will be the center front. Bring those two together and mark the midpoint and the midpoint. Okay, and then to quarter mark the neckline, bring those shoulder seams together, mark the center back, seams together there, mark the center front, then bring my center front to center back, and mark the midpoint on both sides. I'm thinking that this raw edge of my neckband is, I'm going to sew it to the inside of the sweater so that I can then wrap that over to give that crew neck look. That'll be nice, I think. Okay, I just ran back to the table and drew a line exactly one inch from the finished edge. That's really the important part. But this is the part that's gonna show and I really want that to be nice and straight. I'm gonna stick with that wide triple zigzag. And here's my center back going to the join, right up to my line. And now I just wanna find my next two matching points. There's the midway point on the sweater and the midway point on the neckline. Bring those two together, grab, and just give that a little stretch so that they come together evenly. Then find the next two matching points. There's the center front of the band, center front of the sweater. Put those two together and give a little stretch. Oh, go on, broke a needle. Okay, change the needle. New needle, keep going. So I guess I better go slowly over those seams because that was quite a heart attack. Center front, center front. Line up the edge and go slowly over the seams. Next two matching points, line it up, give a stretch. So I wanna make sure that this, the neckline stays in line with that line that I drew on the band. And then right back around to where I started. So now I'm gonna take my band and roll it down over that edge and stitch that down one more time. So I'm going to be sewing now along this edge here. 
and I'm still on that same triple zigzag that's seven millimeters wide and three and a half millimeters long. And again, I better go slowly over those seams. And I'm just going around one more time on the inside just to catch the little loops on the inside of the neckband. I do wish I'd gone a little wider with the band, but overall I'd say that's a win. That's a pretty nice way to turn a turtleneck into a crew neck. Using the finished edge of the turtleneck on the outside, that looks good. I'll give that a final press and that's going to be nice. Okay, I could do the same zigzag around the bottom, but I've got balls of this yarn that I haven't even finished unraveling yet. So I want to try and see if I can actually do a crocheted chain stitch around the bottom. I'm not uh, like a world-class crocheter at all. What I want to do is try to catch each of these loops. I'm just putting my hook through. I'm putting just the end of the yarn wrapped over like that and just pulling that yarn through the loop. Then I'll find the next loop in the knit which is a bit hard to see, wrap my yarn around, pull the yarn through the loop in the sweater, and then through the loop that's on my hook. Next loop, yarn around, pull through the sweater, pull through the loop on my hook. I quite like crochet. I like the rhythm of it. It's kind of satisfying, but yeah, it's definitely not my area of expertise at all, but um, I learned enough to be able to do a chain stitch. I guess it's okay. It's a little rough. I think it'll be fine, especially once I get that fringe trim on. Okay, so I'll keep going around like this and see how that turns out. I did that chain stitch all the way around the bottom, and you can see it's a little bit rough still. So I went around again with a double crochet stitch, which, you know, again, I'm not like the most gifted crochet person, but I think it helped a lot to kind of neaten up the edge and it's giving me a place where I can easily put in the fringe. So let me show you if you want to do the double crochet stitch. Before I go into the sweater, like I did on the chain stitch, I'm gonna just pick up that yarn, keep that around my hook, and then go into that next chain. Good. So I have three loops on my hook and then I'll pick up the yarn again. Now I've got four loops on my hook and then I'm going to pull that through once, pick up the yarn, pull it through two loops, pick up the yarn and pull it through two loops. Good. So I pick up the yarn and I go into my chain, there, go into my chain, pick up the yarn again, pick up the yarn again, pull through one, pick up again, pull through two, pick up again, and pull through two. Pick up the yarn, hook the chain anywhere you can, and then pick up the yarn through one, Pick up the yarn through two, pick up the yarn through two. It makes quite a nice little stitch and it gives you those very convenient spaces. So I've just got a little bit left here to finish. I'm just going to finish that off. I've been playing around with different ways of doing the fringe too, so I'll show you some of that. I've been having fun starting the fringe. I think it's going to be good. So I've got both balls of yarn, I'm putting these into a bag so they don't run away from me as I'm pulling the ends. And this is how I'm doing the fringe. It's really simple. So I'm just taking it over my hand with the ends down there and just wrapping once around. That is it. And then cutting. Then I'm taking a little bobby pin. You could use a safety pin or even a paper clip, I guess, if you don't have a bobby pin. But this is working really nice and easily for me. Okay, so I just have it on the bobby pin like that. Then I can cut the end. I'm kind of doing it like quarter marking the same way I did the neckband, just so I'm, if I'm running low on yarn, I'll know how many I still can do and have it evenly distributed instead of starting in one area and then not being able to get back to where I started. Do you know what I mean? So I've got it quarter marked. So now I'm going to divide those spaces in half. 
so I know I want one right here. And I'm poking the bobby pin down into the front. Find the center there. And then reach through and grab the ends. Pull them all through. Then the bobby pin can come off. And they start off a bit wiggly because the yarn is wiggly from having been knit. But then I just gave them a little press and they came out fine. So once again, I'm just coming around my hand there. Slide the bobby pin on. Cut the end. And then find my halfway point and go down through the right side. Open it up again. Bring all those tails through. Pull it tight and then the bobby pin can slip off. Now, if you didn't do a crocheted edge like this, that's okay. I think you can still wiggle your bobby pin in through any space there. So I'll just keep dividing these spaces in half and putting some in be putting one in between until I like what it looks like. All the tassels are on. I just love it. And to smooth them out, I'm literally taking a hairbrush, brushing them, and then chasing that down with the iron. And once they're laying all smooth, then I can give them a haircut. Oh my goodness, this is such a sweet little sweater now. I just adore it. It's so fun. And that fringe detail, I got to say, I just love it. It's so cute. This whole project, I thought it was going to be way more difficult than it was, especially since I'm not that used to crocheting and I've never made fringe before. But it was really, it was actually pretty quick and I, I enjoyed the whole process. I sat at the kitchen table and chatted with my husband while I made the little tassels and it was quite a pleasure. And now I have this lovely sweet sweater to wear. The neckline is so comfortable and I think it's quite flattering. It's much more flattering than that big chunky thing was that I just did not like at all. The length is great. It's it's much more it's much more me. I just feel fantastic in this sweater now. So let's move on. The one that I really want to be able to wear is this red cashmere one. So I'm not going to do anything too too crazy to it. I just want to get the fit a lot more current, and I want to make that neckline more wearable and get rid of the hole in the sleeve. Though this pink one, it's really long. I don't need that length, but I do like the fit of it around the shoulder. I think it's much more modern looking and flattering. That's all I'm gonna do to this red one is sort of make it fit like this pink one. And I still don't know what I'm gonna do about the neckline, but I gotta do something because I can't wear that. So let's jump into that red one. So when I compare the pink one to the red one, you can see how much deeper the armhole is on the red one. And also the difference in the shoulder the pink shoulder ends there and the red one comes down to here. And I really like how the pink shoulder sits. It fits me nicely and it looks nice and like neat and tidy over the shoulder. I'm going to use pretty much exactly the same technique I used in my most popular video, which is resizing a t-shirt. I'm going to show the same technique here. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate the armhole and the sleeve, but look at this. The pink sleeves are that much longer than the red. And so that gives me a problem because my sleeve is either going to have this seam going across the top of the sleeve, which I don't think that will work out very nicely, or it's going to have to be a three quarter length sleeve. So I think it's going to be a three quarter length sleeve. I've got them both folded exactly in half, nicely lined up. The side seam of this is going to cross over into the sleeve area. There's a seam right here, like this armhole is going to be showing, that little seam is going to show on the side seam of the red one, because see how this comes right over. There's nothing I can do about that, and I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. You know, it might just end up looking like it's supposed to be like that. And you know what, before I start marking this, I really should turn both of them inside out. Here we are, flipped inside out now. So I just want to get the pink one laying out smooth. And then I'm just going to trace that and you'll see what I mean about I'm going right into the sleeve here. And then I want this to be laying flat up here and just peek underneath That's there. So hopefully this seam ends up looking just like 
part of the construction of the finished sweater. We'll see. That's where I'm going to be cutting the body. And now the sleeve, I need to just boost that down. I'm going to bring the seam right out to the edge there. I'm taking the seam of this sleeve up as high as I can till it's just touching the seam of that sleeve. But I want to keep this folded edge together. Good. Okay. So clearly I'll be tapering the red sleeve. It's going to come out to here. And now again, I just need to peek underneath and trace just a little bit away from the edge there, just leaving like a little bit of seam on. So I'll go about halfway and then come in the other way here. Peek underneath. Trace, just leaving a little extra for seam allowance. Good. Okay, this fabric in between is what I'm removing from the sweater. And that's going to make a big difference in the way it fits, especially the way it sits on the shoulder and under the arm. I just sort of uh, tried them on, like putting on the body and then sliding the sleeve up to where they would meet at the shoulder. And that left the sleeve being kind of just an awkward length. And so I just cut another inch off the top of the sleeves. And then I just put a little notch at the center of the sleeve. And then I just want to have a matching notch at the center of the armhole. It really needs to be just tiny, just big enough to see. Now the sleeves are symmetrical. There's no front and back to it. And so I can take either sleeve, match up corner to corner. And my little notch goes to my little notch. Right side together. I only left a little bit of seam allowance, like a quarter inch. You could sew this at the edge of your presser foot and then zigzag the edge. Or you could serge. If you do want to just straight up serge or overlock it, uh, have matching thread in your serger. The stitches in between might show and that would look kind of bad. So I'll see if I have four red serger cones. Making sure my edges stay together so I don't end up with a hole. So I'll check that on the outside, make sure there's no puckers, no gaps. Looking good. Okay, and the same to the second sleeve. There's where I finished cutting this the sleeve. I definitely don't want this wrist to get any smaller because now it has to sit on my forearm. I'll be surging this side seam together right through the seam to, of the armhole and then blending into about the waist. Then I'll try it on and see if I want to take in the waist at all, but we'll see. I put it on inside out. When it's inside out, it's easy to pin in a line of where you want to take it in. So I'm just going to sew from pin to pin. And I'll do both sides the same. So this isn't a big amount, but it just makes it more trim around the waist. Less like a sweatshirt, I guess. So just surging where I'm taking it in on the sides. So I'll try that on one more time, make sure I'm happy with the body. So that takes care of the fitting problems. And now I still have the neck problem. It is a tiny little chain stitch like you'll find on most sweaters. And I cannot find a way to just pull that chain stitch and let her rip. It just is coming out one little tiny stitch at a time. And what I'm going to try to do is take off the neck just leave a couple inches on the center back attached. So I'll be removing it, cutting down the body, and then reattaching the same neckband, but just lower. That should work. Once that stitch on the inside is off, though, it does just come off easily. The finished edge on the outside is staying intact, so that's beautiful. I think I will be able to just persuade it to be lower. So the front of the neckband is off. It really didn't take too long. Oh my gosh, look at that. I can easily get that neck to be lowered by two inches, like without even trying, right? That's, oh, that's very exciting. I definitely need a right angle at the center front and then just to blend in up here. Now I want to move the back out of the way, match up my shoulder seams there, and then I'm just going to cut, leaving just a pinky finger width of seam allowance, blend in there. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's the smile on my face right now. That's what I look like. I don't even think I need to steam and block that out. I think it's just going to volunteer to go into place there. 
it, that is just so nice. All right, sweet. So stretching from front to back, there's my center front. That's gonna be easy peasy. So sandwiching that cut edge in between the layers of my neckband, looking good. I'm pointing all my pins toward where I'm gonna be starting to sew. So now what I'm gonna to try to do is sew right along the edge of that neckband. You'll see. Boy, oh boy though, it's really hard to see that edge. Ugh. Once it goes under that pressure foot, it's gone. I can't see a bloody thing here. Oh yeah. Can you see back there? I think that's looking pretty good. Is that good enough? It's okay. I'm definitely not going to unpick it. But I am wondering if it would have been better to do it by hand. I'm going to give it a little press. Maybe that'll help. That's after the final press. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but that little, like, ruffly edge where it looks like the loops aren't sewn down, maybe I'll just go over that with a needle and thread and just get those to lay flat. And then I almost forgot about the hole in the sleeve. What I've got is regular red sewing thread. So here I am on the inside uh, just to hide the knot then I'll bring it out to the right side so I'm just going to start by tracing my needle up one side and then I want to catch the loop of the stitch coming down and I'm going to go straight down and then over to the next row the next line of knitting and bring my needle catching the loops there. And then over to the next line, kind of weave my needle through and straight down there. So just weaving your needle back and forth vertically. You're at the other side of the hole now, kind of just weaving it in. All right, so that's already better, right? But now I'll go horizontally and just kind of making little stitches, teeny tiny, so that you can make sure that your stitches are just invisible. So just weaving back and forth like that. And then I'll just finish it off with um, the iron. Some steam will just kind of make everything lay flat. And oh my gosh, that's actually pretty darn good, isn't it? That's pretty darn good. Alrighty, I'll bring my needle back to the inside to tie my knot. I'll leave my needle hanging on the outside just so I can show you after it's been steamed how like pretty invisible it is. On the back here too, if I notice any little loops that have not been caught, I'll just catch those on the back. So to tie my knot, pulling my needle through, there's a little loop that forms. My needle goes back through that loop. And that was just a single thread I was using, right? That's one reason why it's so hard to see. It's just a single thread. So yeah, I'm not going to cut that thread. I'll just stick it back out there. And I'm going to give that a little shot of steam, and you'll see. Now, if I didn't have my thread hanging there, I honestly would not be able to find that hole. That's pretty good. That is invisible, right? So the red one is done. I have to say I just adore it. If you're looking even that close, it looks pretty darn good, I have to say, right? I think that looks, I gotta say, it looks pretty amazing. I love the three-quarter sleeve. I'm so glad I went with that. That was kind of the key to the whole thing. It wasn't gonna really work if I didn't kind of accepting the idea of the three-quarter sleeve, but I'm really glad I did, especially for somebody like me that always runs a little bit hot. It's just kind of perfect. The neckline, it probably doesn't look that different to you. I'll put the before picture side by side and you can see, but the feeling is like worlds apart. It was just that little inch that I dropped it and that's really all I needed. And now it's like comfortable, I can breathe, I'm not being strangled. I could have encouraged it easily, probably down to there. That would have been no problem at all. That's probably another inch down. So with the narrower armhole, it's really just a much more sleek, more modern fit, right? With that really deep armhole that it had before, just really felt outdated. And so now I feel much more current. I think it's a lot more flattering. Okay, I think I have time for one more sweater and it's gonna be the blue one. Let me see if I can squeeze that one in. 
What I want to try is one of the cutout kind of sweaters. So doing maybe two cutouts on the shoulder. I found in my stash a few of these like navy blue zippers. So I thought I might try to do a cutout and insert the zipper into it. Yeah, that would be kind of cute, right? Oh, I don't know. I've never done this before. This is uncharted territory. So I'm going to take it off and actually like slash those lines, try it back on and then see what I need to do. I don't know. We'll see. Here goes nothing. I'm going to just start snipping in on those lines. I tried to clean up the line so that it's a smooth line right through the shoulder seam. And then I marked where I wanted it to end on the back as well. So one is a five inch zipper and one's a seven inch zipper. I just want to pin the zippers in place now. And so all I'm doing is folding under an edge there and putting that against the teeth of the zipper. And I really should be careful not to stretch this piece. I could get fancy and cut a little Y at the end to accommodate the zipper, but I'm going to just try to keep this simple and quick. I don't have to get this perfect to just try it on and make sure I'm happy with how that's going to look. It might have been smart to put some interfacing on the back of this even before I slashed it. That would have been probably a good idea. Okay, we're not there yet. <laughs> right now I'm wishing I had just done the one because this one is sitting nicely. Like, I think that's actually kind of beautiful. This one though is a bit of a disaster because it's super loose fitting there and it's just hanging funny and I wish I had just done the one. Okay, no worries, I don't give up easily. And so what I'm gonna do is flip it inside out and see if I can get that to sit smoothly. Uh, we'll see. Okay, we're inside out and now I can start to pin away some of this like droopy excess. I always wish I had a sewing buddy that would come in and know how to pin for me. <laughs> I've had some viewers say, oh, I wish we lived close together. We would have so much fun. And I'm like, yeah, I wish we did too. You could come over and help me pin. Oh, I just got into a whole can of worms here. I don't know. One reason why I have like a fairly high success rate with my DIYs is because I don't give up. I just keep working at it, keep trying it on, trying different things. I keep working at it until I like it. And so sometimes in a situation like this, you might get to a point where you think, oh, well, I just screwed it up. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done that. And you give up. Don't give up too easily. There's usually some creative way to save the day. So that's what I'm in right now. I'm going to try to save the day here. <laughs> what did I do? Here is the thought that might just save me. I have one more five inch zipper. So how would this be? If I set that zipper into the back of this, this gap that's just too big and they kind of just, you know, there's a space in between where they meet. That might be nice. That could work. Okay. So I'm not freaking out too much at the moment. Just a little. Okay. So I actually think I just fell in love. I think it's really good. All right. So. It's so fussy and fiddly though. I think I'm going to do a bit of hand basting to get it in place nicely and then I'll be able to just run around with this a straight stitch. Okay. So everything is hand basted. So it gives me a lot of confidence too. I think I'm going to be able to sew around this without much difficulty. I've got my zipper foot on the left hand side. I have to say it's nice to not have pins in my way. I'm a big fan of the hand basting right now. Once I take out that basting stitch though, I think it's great. I really think I'm excited. I'm taking the sides, I just had it on and I pinned in a line. I'll be blending right into the sleeve and coming down. So I'm taking some away from under the arm and all the way down the side. So I'm gonna sew that, try it on. If it's good, I'll trim off the extra and then serge and then I'll be done. Because this is so stretchy, I'll switch my stitch to a zigzag stitch that's two millimeters wide and two millimeters long. And then just sewing from pin to pin. Okay, so there's the blue one done. And I think that's kind of a cool detail. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that one. So the body is fitting a little bit better now. And those two cutouts, I, they're like 
perfectly placed so that my bra strap is totally covered. So I think that's a really modern take on a simple sweatshirt and that can be done really to any, like even a plain gray sweatshirt, you could totally do that. I still also wonder if I would have been better to just do the one, but the second one is fun to play around with too. I am pleased with the result and it's something totally different for me, but I like it. I think that's really fun and cool. So I hope you enjoyed my process through these three sweater up cycles. I had a blast and I've got three really fun new sweaters to wear. So I'm super glad you were along with me for the journey. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care. Supposed to feel